Welcome to another session of Dentistry and More. We shall be continuing the last topic discussion for oral radiology. We will be talking about these topics that is cysts of the jaw, benign tumors of the jaw, malignant diseases of the jaw, diseases of the bone manifested in jaws, trauma to the teeth as well as the facial structures. So under the first chapter that is the cysts of the jaw, the short notes that can be asked are the radiographic features of the periapical cyst or the other name is radicular cyst itself. So in the radiographic features of periapical cyst, there is a loss of the minor dura that is seen. Along with that, you can see there is a well-defined periapical radiolucency associated with the apex of the tooth, which can be more than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. And it has been enclosed with a sclerotic border. And you can see that there is sometimes rarely root resorption that is external root resorption can occur in the affected tooth. Same goes with this question radicular cyst is also the other name for the periapical cyst itself. So once a radicular cyst as such the questions are being asked we can start off with what is it? It is an inflammatory odontogenic cyst associated with the non-vital teeth and the clinical features are that it can be seen most commonly around the maxillary anterior region and it's a painless bony expansive lesion wherein you can see that there is crepitus that has been observed by non-palpation and also when secondary in, in, secondarily infected the patient may complain of a symptom such as pain on, on and on FNAC that is on aspiration you might see a brown to straw colored fluid and the treatment on the clinic these are the clinical features that has been extensively been mentioned here and the radiographic features I have already mentioned in the previous slide you can highlight about that too and then the treatment is such as the root canal treatment is done or an extraction can be done along with the enucleation of the cyst under the next chapter the benign tumors of the jaws the question that can be asked as a long essay is the classification of odontogenic cysts which you can go through in the um, in any of the standard textbooks of oral medicine such as that of Anil Gomes or you can go through the other textbooks such as the Ravikiran Ongol itself where they have given the classification that's given by Shears where it has been classified based on the etiology developmental inflammatory and also under that developmental and inflammatory you have developmental dentigerous cyst eruption cyst the odontogenic keratocyst gingival cyst of newborn and the adult, lateral periodontal cyst, calcifying odontogenic cyst and the glandular odontogenic cyst. In the inflammatory you have the periapical cyst, parodontal cyst and the residual cyst. And based on the tissue of origin, it has been derived from the res of malasis that is a periapical cyst and the residual cyst. When it is, it is derived from the reduced enamel epithelium, you have dentigerous cyst, erup eruption cyst and then under the derived from the dental lamina or the cell rest of ceres that is the odontogenic keratosis, the gingival cyst of the newborn, gingival cyst of the adult, lateral periodontal cyst, and then the glandular odontogenic cyst. And the ones that are unclassified is the parodontal cyst and the calcifying odontogenic cyst. And then the second part of the question is explain in detail about the clinical and the radiological features with management and complications of dentigerous cyst. First, we can speak about what is dentigerous cyst. It is a cyst that has been arising from the enlargement of the follicular space of an uninterrupted tooth or an impacted tooth, which is attached to the tooth neck, and then the clinical associated with the crown of the impacted tooth, and is most commonly seen in the mandibular and the maxillary third molars as well as the maxillary cuspid region. It is found to be a solitary lesion which has expansion with a facial asymmetry and also root resorption is seen with the adjacent tooth. The radiological features there are three types that is the central, lateral, and the circumferential. The central when it involves the crown portion, and then we have the circumferential which encloses the whole of the crown, and then you have the lateral, which is found to be lateral to the tooth itself. So it is found to be a radiolucent area within which is associated with the unerupted tooth or the impacted tooth. Then the next chapter is about the malignant diseases of the jaw. You 
Yes, and the management of uh, the dentigerous cyst is nothing other than inoculation or masopolization that has been done for the cyst along with the uh, removal of the tooth affected. That is, an uh, impacted tooth has also been removed along with it. And the complications is that once it is left untreated, it can lead to amyloblastoma as such. Then the next the chapter is about malignant diseases of the jaw. This is uh, mainly a clear oral medicine topic. So, when the question has been asked about adenoid cystic carcinoma, you can speak about what is it. It is a malignant tumor of the salivary gland, which is most commonly seen as the second most common and it is most commonly affecting the submandibular, sublingual as well as the minor salivary glands. And the male to female predilation is equally distributed. And also, it is found to be occurring in the fifth decade. And the clinical features is that it is most commonly affecting the palatal region because of the uh, involvement of the minor salivary glands. And also, it is found to be an asymptomatic, slowly enlarging mass. And the parotid is most affected, so in which you can see a facial nerve paralysis also along with it. So, the treatment for such a case is that surgical excision is supposed to be done for such a carcinoma case. Chapters about the diseases of bone manifested in jaws. Most commonly, they can ask as long as they have already mentioned the old medicine part, that is the classification of fibrosis lesions, and also write in detail about the fibrous dysplasia, where I've already explained about in detail what are the uh, how to go about for fibrous dysplasia, how to explain about it. Next, that can be asked as a short note under this chapter is the moth eaten appearance. So the moth eaten appearance, you have to say in which cases scenarios do you see moth eaten appearance? You see it in Burkitt's lymphoma, chronic superative osteomyelitis, osteosarcoma, osteoradionecrosis too. And how does this appear? It is a wide areas of the bone destruction with sequestrae that are seen, where there are zones of radio opacity separated from sequestrae by zone of radiolucency. And then you can see a scattered areas of bone destruction of different size and number, which are separated by variable distances. So you can see here in the skull vault, the moth eaten appearance. So the next chapter is about the trauma to the teeth and the facial structure, which is the last chapter of this oral radiology discussion. So the question that can be asked is the radiographic diagnosis of facial trauma. So you can refer from the textbook of oral radiology by White and Farrow under the chapter trauma itself. So they have also mentioned in the first part of the page itself about the applied radiology in relation to the fracture cases. Here you can speak about the radiological signs of the fractures. There are about general signs that have been given and listed here around four types wherein you can say that there is a presence of one or two sharply defined radiolucent lines with the anatomic boundaries of a structure. And then next is about the change in the normal anatomic outline of the shape of the structure which can define as a look and we can indicate the presence and the location of the fracture in that and then there's a loss of continuity of an outer border that is a step type defect is seen that is a gap in the continuity of the smooth tooth or the cortical border that is seen is called as a step type defect and then you have an increase in the radio opacity is nothing other than overlapping of two fragments of the bone or the tooth wherein it forms as a doubly radio opaque that is more it is, has more increased radio density is seen that is radio opacity is seen more. So these are the radiological signs in, to relate to fracture cases and so how to detect the trauma cases it is seen in detection of the soft tissues and bone, bone injuries which can be indicated through the MRI scans and then CT is more preferred over the normal conventional radiographs and the standard radiographic projections that we use for facial trauma that is indicated as the anteroposterior or the posterior anterior so, uh, the views then the caldwells and the waters that is for indicating any sinus paranasal sinuses if, if it has been indicated in the fractures that is what these projections have been indicated for that then you have the town's projection and the lateral projection where you can see if there is any uh, mid third fractures can be indicated for such cases so with this we end up the oral medicine and radiology discussion of the question papers thank you for your kind listening